So I've just completed all of my flow specifications and uh, that's the your objective is to replicate this. Uh, I just want to show you some, give you a walkthrough of the final changes I've made. Um, first of all, I noticed that, um, again, for reasons I don't understand, this stereotype flow specification is showing twice on these boxes and that just looks untidy to me. So if you highlight them and select appearance, At the bottom of the list you can switch these off and that just makes it slightly more tidy. And I've also set all of the flow specifications to be this pink colour just so that just to identify them slightly better. Let me now walk you through uh, what I've done. I just maximise my screen. So I've created these uh, more complex flow specifications for the uh, timer, that is the, in, the the thing which captures the signals for switching the timer on and off. Um, the one for the emitter, which switches the emitter on and off. Uh, the one for the lamp, which switches the lamp on and off. The one for the motor, which switches the motor on and off. And the door, which represents the door open and closed. Um, and having uh, defined those flow specifications which group together those signals, I've then systematically worked around the, the block definition diagram, setting my flow ports accordingly. So the lamp on off is the is named flow uh, is typed by this flow spec lamp. Um, the emitter is typed by the flow spec emitter. Um, the start stop button is typed by this um, flow spec timer start stop exactly as you'd expect. The only time consuming one here is the timer block because there obviously there are quite a lot of signals and receptions there. The final thing to notice here is that I have done some renaming of my blocks. Um, that was just because I, I decided my naming convention was slightly confusing. So you notice that each of these um, flow properties now I've just uh, started with FP and I think that makes it uh, somewhat clearer uh, how these are identified.